welcome. In this unit, we'll be talking about conic sections. Let's start with the definition of conic section. A conic section are the curves generated by the intersection of a plane with one or two napes of a right circular cone. Napes of a cone just mean one of the prongs of the cone, and a right circular cone is simply one in which the apex, or the point of the cone, is centered over the base. Let's take an a look at what these things might look like. So if I take my cone here, notice this is a right cone because the tip is centered over the base. And if I want to look at it slicing it with some planes, those would give me conic sections. For example, if I took a slice this way, I would end up with a conic section of a circle. So notice that the base of this cone looks like a circle, and any slice parallel to that base would also look like a circle. If I took a more exotic slice, say I took a slice at an angle, I've already done that with this cone. If I take a slice at an angle of the cone, the shape that results, this shape here, is an ellipse. So that is a conic section. There's a lot of more exciting conic sections. For example, if I take a slice parallel to one of the edges, I'll end up with a parabola. And if I consider two cones aligned on top of each other, top to bottom, and I take a vertical slice, I'll end up with a hyperbola. So any of these slices of a right circular cone give me something that we call a conic section. And we'll be talking about the four main conic sections of a parabola, a circle, an ellipse, and a hyperbola. Let's go ahead and take a look at these conic sections. The first conic section we'll consider is the parabola. You're probably very familiar with a parabola by now because we've been dealing with it in our previous sections on polynomials and quadratic functions. The parabola standard equation is something of the form y equals x squared, where we can also add in some things by shifting the vertex around and taking a factor a which will stretch or reflect our graph. Up here we have two examples of para parabolic equations. The first one is kind of our standard parabolic equation, y equals x squared. The second picture you see shows my parabola reflected over the x-axis, so it's opening downwards, and with a vertex at the point negative 1, 5. So this is an example of a parabola that's been shifted and stretched. Um, we have a general equation of a parabola which you're somewhat familiar with by now, y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k, and in this form hk is the vertex of the parabola, and that factor a in front gives us the stretching or reflection. Let's look at another conic section. The next conic section you'll be talking about are circles. Most students are pretty familiar with what the properties of a circle are, namely you have some center point and the set of points a given distance away. We call that given distance the radii. So a circle is a point at the center which gives us a set of points equidistant from that they're, they're all a distance r away from that center point. On the board I've given you two samples of circles. The first circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25, is a circle with the center at the origin, or 0, 0, with a radius of 5. The second circle you see here is a circle that's been shifted over. It has a center at the point 3, 4, but it also has a radius of 5. The general equation for a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. From this equation, that r squared gives you the radius. The r is the radius and the factor is squared. So for example, in both of these circles I've shown you, you see that 25? Well, 25 is really 5 squared, so that's what's telling me that the radius of that circle is 5. Also from the general equation, you see that h and k, that tells you where the center of the circle is. For example, in the second circle in my picture, the center is at 3, 4, so the equation has a x minus 3, and a y minus 4 contained in the equation. Let's move on and look at our next conic section. The next conic section we'll be talking about is an ellipse. Ellipses have a really neat property. One of the properties of an ellipse is that an ellipse has two foci, and the ellipse is composed of the points for which the distance from each foci, when added together, is a constant. One standard thing you may have seen in high school is if you take a set of pegs and a string, the ellipse is all the points swept out as I move this string around. So these two distances, the distance from my finger to the purple one on the right and the purple one on the left, gives me an ellipse. So if I draw it this way, I would sweep out the curve of the ellipse. Well, if we look at my ellipse here, there's several key special points on my elliptical graph. The first one I just talked about were those foci, those purple pins in my little diagram but also these red dots on the figure over here. The foci are the set of points which 
Every point on the ellipse, if I sum the distance to each of the foci, I maintain a constant value. We also talk about the major and minor axes. The major axis is kind of the longest axis of symmetry of the ellipse, and the minor axis is the shorter one. So you see here the red and the green lines indicate my major and minor axes. The general equation for the ellipse is given on this slide. You see that it has a center at the point hk, and we have values of a and b which are related to the lengths of that major and minor axis on my ellipse. And depending on whether A or B is bigger, that will tell you whether your ellipse is oriented horizontally or vertically. All right, let's move on and talk about our last conic section, the hyperbola. A hyperbola is kind of different than the other conic sections in that it's composed of two curves or two disjoint curves that don't touch each other necessarily. In my hyperbola on the side here, we have two foci again, but notice that the curve isn't an ellipse around those foci, rather it's two broken up curves. We also have two special lines which we call the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. These two axes are just related to the spacing of the hyperbola curves. We have two equations for a hyperbola. We'll only be talking about hyperbolas in this class that are centered at zero, zero. So I didn't bother giving you the equations with different centers. So here you see we have the two equations if we're centered at zero, zero. One is for a hyperbola oriented sideways or opening out to the left and right. The other is the equation of a hyperbola opening up and down or oriented vertically. All right, well, what will we be doing in this course? In this unit, you're gonna to learn to graph parabolas, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. You'll also learn how to find the equation of a circle given certain properties about that circle. Namely, we'll tell you the center and the radius, and you'll try to find the equation of the circle. We may also give you a little bit more tricky one where we give you the center and one point on the circle, and you'll have to determine the radius in order to find the equation. What are the applications of conic sections? There's quite a few, actually. We'll be talking about several applications, including things like parabolic motion or projectile motion. You saw in a previous video we talked about the shape a ball takes when shooting through the air, or the position of a ball as a function of time falling under gravity, is a parabola. We'll also talk about planetary orbits being examples of things that follow an elliptical orbit. Most people know that the Earth revolves around the Sun in an ellipse. There's other things that revolve in elliptical orbits, including electrons around the center or nucleus of an atom. Finally, there's a lot of great applications of hyperbola. For example, a sonic boom generated by an aircraft, those waves when they intersect the ground make the shape of a hyperbola. And another one I just learned today is that when you sharpen your pencil, you know, you get those little scallopy things along the edge of the pencil. Well, it turns out those are the shapes of hyperbolas. Finally, in architecture, you'll see circles, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas all the time. So that's another great application field of these conic sections. Enjoy learning about conic sections in this unit. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Cut.